evening and welcome to the Delaware County Board of Library Directors meeting for June 4th, 2020. Along with us tonight is our uh, director, Kathy Biddle, myself, Mary Ann Bowen, Annie LaPelle, Helen McGrain, Inder Baines, Susan Keller, Jenny, Karen, and Jason. Although this here is different, we're all together and we are going to have our library meeting. So I would like to have a motion to approve the minutes for February, 2020. I move to approve the minutes. Vote Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Having none, minutes are approved. I'm gonna turn it over to Kathy Biddle for our communications and announcements. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, the first thing I'd like to mention is the Delaware County Library System has hired an early literacy specialist to fill their position. This position goes to the libraries, the 26 member libraries and provides um, educational activities to children ages birth to toddler. Uh, this position was supposed to start pre-COVID. Uh, we have held off since libraries were closed. Um, so we don't have an estimated date of when the candidate will start. The next item is the assistant director district consultant position. We have appointed uh, Annie Lepley, who comes to us from Radnor Library. Her start date is July 6th. And I'd like to introduce Annie and have her say a few words. Hi, everybody. I'm really excited to get started next month uh, as the district consultant and um, assistant director. As Kathy mentioned, I'll be coming uh, to you from the Radnor Memorial Library, where I've served as the executive director for the past five years. And for about 10 years prior to that, um, I was the youth services manager at the Haverford Township Free Library. Uh, so I have a, a long history here at Delaware County Libraries, and I'm just looking forward to uh, continuing to work with all of our members uh, in, in the upcoming years. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Annie. The Welcome. Next... <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. The next item I'd like to talk about is the online summer reading program that began June 1st. <laughs> Registration was open then. Uh, this year, Delaware County Libraries began its first ever online version of Summer Quest Reading on June 1st. It runs until September 13th. There are four reading challenges, so there's something for every age, including adults. The programs can be accessed from our website, and if you'd like to use a mobile device, the app called Beanstack is available at iTunes and the Google Play app stores. Participating in Summer Quest is a great way to help kids keep reading and learning over the summer, and it helps to reduce the slide that can occur when school's out. Adults participating in the challenge will have the opportunity to expand their reading horizons and try new things. This year's summer quest will also include a countywide community goal. Um, we're challenging Delco residents to collectively read 5,000 books this summer. So we're really excited about this. Okay, with that, I'd like to have a motion to approve the financial report for April, 2020. I move to approve the financial report for April, 2020. I'll need a second. I'll go ahead and second that. All in favor? Can I ask Aye. a question first? I'm sorry, go ahead, Susan. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to point out or, and ask Kathy about um, the salary line was impacted by COVID-19 and I just wanted her to talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, yes, um, uh, back when, um, I, I believe it was in March, um, the county had made the decision to furlough some employees and 50% of library services uh, were fur furloughed, so it will impact the salary line item. And just to get in the minutes that uh, the library services have been doing a fantastic job with half the people. <laughs> Half the, re half the human resources that they usually have. So I just think it's important to, for 
for us at this difficult time in our history in our county to just to note that. Okay, so do, should I move again? Yes, please. Okay, uh, I'm going to move to approve the April 2020 financial report. I'll go ahead and second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Following, we're going into the administrators, administrator's report. Kathy? Okay, I'd like to talk about PPE, personal protection um, equipment for libraries. Delaware County Library System headquarters was able to coordinate purchases of sneeze guards, masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer for local libraries to achieve competitive prices and assure that they meet CDC guidelines for protection of staff and the library community. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge and thank the Library Foundation of Delaware County who granted each library $115 towards the purchase of PPE. I'd also like to mention that all of the member libraries in Delaware County have made a concerted effort to ensure that all their staff um, has all the equipment they need to conduct library operations. And we appreciate their efforts. Moving on to committee reports, Kathy. The pandemic committee, um, although our libraries have emergency response plans in place, representatives from several libraries across Delaware County met back in early April to develop a plan to guide, coordinate, and improve efforts to respond to a pandemic. Information and recommendations were gathered from the CDC, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, and the Office of Commonwealth Libraries, and a plan was developed. Working in unison, Delaware County libraries have created a comprehensive plan that addresses the challenges that must be faced during an outbreak. Okay, we have the reopening committee, Annie. Hi, yes. Um, so uh, in an effort to ensure that we had policies and procedures in place for all of the libraries uh, to reopen, Delaware County Libraries, uh, with Kathy's direction, uh, formed a reopening committee. And all member libraries were encouraged to have a staff member participate on that committee. And the group ended up consisting of reference librarians, directors, circulation staff, and DCL staff members. Uh, we were tasked with reviewing the shared services, uh, and then we made several recommendations uh, for temporary policy or procedure changes during the yellow phase of reopening. Um, and just to highlight a few of those, uh, we made recommendations for contact list pickup procedures, ideas for managing requests uh, for books, um, safe handling instructions for, for materials like quarantining items for 72 hours before checking them in and, and other uh, recommendations along those lines. Uh, we made recommendations about how um, to access public computers safely uh, when we move into a phase that will allow that. Uh, and then the group also has made several recommendations uh, for temporary changes to circulation policies, and those will be discussed, I think, in the next agenda item. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Moving on to new business, Kathy. Uh, yes, uh, just to um, follow through on what Annie just mentioned, I'd like uh, to request that the board would put forth a motion for temporary circulation adjustments. Uh, the items that we need to adjust and suspend, well, just, yes, adjust and suspend during the yellow phase are, we'd like to move items, all items to a three week loan period. We would like to decrease renewals to one renewal per item. And only during the yellow phase, as of now, we'd like to request that the um, online hold function be suspended. I make a motion to approve the temporary circulation adjustments as listed by Kathy Biddle just now. I'll go ahead and second that as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion carries. Moving on to district agreement approval required. Kathy, that would be you? Uh, yes, yes it is. Uh, the, the Delaware County Library System each year enters into an agreement with the 26 member libraries within our system. And this is to provide services to the residents within the district, which also happens to be uh, Delaware County, the border. So um, this uh, a negotiation committee was formed between um, representatives from the member libraries. We got together, we came up with a plan, we submitted it to the libraries and um, we got approval from 24 libraries. So it was adopted. Uh, we are asking that a motion be put forth. I froze I for a minute to... there, Kathy. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can we go back to that? I froze for a minute. Can we go oh, back to the district? Sure. Agreement? Sure. The district negotiation agreement is an agreement between the Delaware County Library System and the member libraries within our district. Our district happens to be within the footprint of Delaware County. We provide services to 26 libraries within the county at 28 locations. So the agreement is formulated and decided from representatives of those member libraries. Uh, we then go ahead and make recommendations and send the plan out to all the libraries within the district. 24 of the libraries within the district signed. Um, so that means it was adopted. It can be submitted to the state. And I just need a motion for approval from this board so that the um, agreement can go into effect. Okay, I move to uh, approve the district agreement. I'll go ahead and second that as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Going ahead, <clears throat> old business. Uh, there are There is no old business at this time. Okay, could I mention one thing? Well, I'm gonna mention one thing. I don't know whether or not the um, people that will be calling in asking questions probably, I don't know whether they can hear me or not. If um, I just wanted to um, refresh our memories. I know I had mentioned about a uh, program that was gonna be going on in the Aston Library. Um, it's called um, Felix Gets His Wheels. Well, since then there have been four other books that were published from the, the sur a surgeon, a doctor, an anesthesiologist, and of course, one of the residents in Aston. I have the um, website where it can, you can go in there and see his books, if anyone's interested. I can either email them to you, I can email you the uh, website, and you can go in and look. They're very interesting books. And at this time that we're going through, I think it would be a really help for the children. So you decide what you would like me to do. You want me to email, email to Kathy and you can send it out there to the other libraries? Kathy? Sure. Okay. Sure. Right, I'll do that then. I can do that. Um, okay. So with oh, no old business, uh, we can go to the public comments. Sure. So if anyone is interested in submitting a question or making a comment, there's two options that you can use. One is you can email your name and address to support one at delcolibraries.org, or you can call in at 610-891-8622. And I do have one comment, and it's from the Crozier, the J. Lewis Crozier Library in Chester. The Crozier Library has been awarded a second $20,000 grant by the Foundation for Delaware County to support programming related to reading enhancement with the schools and other organizations. It's wonderful. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Crozier. And um, I think I have another one. Um, oh, okay, this is from the Upper Darby Libraries. Uh, thank you for offering the meeting online and the opportunity to give updates. First, we wanted to give a warm welcome to Annie Lefley. We are all looking forward to working with her. Second, we want to thank DCL for the work you are doing to coordinate the PPE coronavirus response and facilitating resources from the foundation. Next, we have a few updates. 
We are pleased to share Dr. Jean Kosha was selected to present the recent inclusion and representation in youth program um, programs webinar. Also, we're grateful for the board and the library opportunities to participate in training webinars being offered via grants from the Library Services and Technology Act. And last, we wanted to share that our Friends of the Library organization can now accept online memberships and gifts. And the link is really super long. Um, so maybe what we can do is we can send that out um, on social media or provide it on our website. And I'm sure Upper Darby can also probably share that. And uh, that's all the comments and the questions that we have. Can I um, ask that we explain just a little bit about why there's no online holds anymore? I mean, we approved it and that's great, but just for people's information that they need to oh, contact sure. their library. Sure. So um, we currently do not have van delivery in the system. So we have no way of getting books from one library to the other. So we have to go old school. I don't know how many of you remember before we actually had delivery. Um, you had to physically drive to a different library if you wanted their materials. And, and that's what you have to do. So we had to turn off the requests because if you made a request, say you live in Ridley Township and you make a request of Marple Township, that book's never gonna get from Marple to Ridley Township. I mean, it's going to eventually get there, but we just don't know when. So we turned off the request and now we're just asking uh, patrons that when the libraries do eventually open, you have to contact the library directly uh, if you want an item that's on their shelf. And Annie, maybe you can speak a little bit about the process. It's either forms, phone, or email. Um, yes, yeah, so each individual library will be doing things a, a little bit differently, um, but um, every library, you'll be able to call them uh, to, to ask any of these questions. Um, and then many of the individual libraries will have a form on their website that you can submit or a particular email address to use uh, to make a request. Uh, and also uh, many libraries will be offering uh, to help you select items since you won't be able to come in uh, to browse. So um, you can look for uh, some reader's advisory help uh, with the individual libraries if you're interested. But the fact Andy, that, oh, sorry, go ahead, Susan. I was gonna say, but the fact that, that patrons will be able to put their hands on real books is, is coming soon maybe in some cases, right? Contactless delivery, <laughs> mm -hmm. library uh -huh. by library. I know each library uh, is, is going to be on their own schedule. For instance, in, in Radnor, we're going to begin taking uh, returns next week. And then the following week, we'll be beginning our contact list pickup service. I believe many libraries will be on a similar schedule, but um, everyone is going to be a, a little bit different based on their uh, capacity and their building and, and that sort of thing. Annie, if a patron already has items on hold in the system, will they just remain on hold? Or will um, the suspension wipe, wipe them out? Um, happy to jump in if I say yes. this incorrectly, <laughs> but I believe that the holds will just stay on your account. Um, if the library that you're um, going to happens to own that item, um, I'm, I'm sure you could arrange with them to get it. Um, but if it is something owned by another library, it would just stay until we're able to, to turn that function back on. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, it stays in the queue. And we've actually, usually our hold requests expire within six months. We've actually yeah, extended right. that out so that, oh, good. Um, yeah, your hold won't expire. It should be there waiting for you when things go back to the new normal. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before I ask um, to adjourn, I'd like to make a few comments. 
Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all our libraries for what they have done during this pandemic. The uh, programs that they're offering online and the continuing of their programs, your chair yoga, your children's programs, it's phenomenal. And I've been paying attention through Facebook, through our website, to see exactly what libraries are doing. I had an email, and I'm sure we all had an email from the Haverford Library. The, um, I'm not sure if he's the librarian. Uh, you might be able to set me right. Who is any, I'm not sure. He, he commented on how well his employees were handling this whole situation. And I felt that that was a, a very kind way of saying thank you and showing how he is so appreciative of his employees. And I thought that was very kind. I'm sure everyone got that email. Was that Phil Goldstein? You know, I'm not sure. I don't have it in front of me and I meant to put it in front of me. He's the board, yeah. But it was, it was a lovely saying, and I'd like to say thank you to him for showing his appreciation to his employees. But all the libraries have done a fantastic job during this pandemic. Um, with that being said, I'd like to thank Zoom for being our host tonight. Um, I do not, I'm not gonna comment on when we will be having our next meeting live because we're not sure. Kathy, I believe you said that our next, our August meeting will probably be Zoom and you'll be in contact. Yes, most likely it will be on Zoom. Okay, so we would go with possibly October 1st, our Marple Public Library, but that will also be on hold till we find out where we stand. Exactly. Uh, can I, before you get to adjournment, can I also just highlight our DCLS staff and all the online, you know, people have been living on the online books and the audio books and that takes, uh, staff effort and time and we appreciate that <laughs> absolutely 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 we've all done a really good job they've all done a really good job and um they should be commended so with that i'm going to ask a motion to adjourn i think helen that would be you sorry i had to unmute myself i move <laughs> to adjourn the meeting i'll go ahead and second that okay that motion carries. We can all eat our dinner. Uh, I think so. you have to vote. They have to vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposed. Everybody wants to go home. Okay. With that, motion carries. Thank you and good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night everybody.